2019 has been a very interesting year for Rooster Teeth. A lot of changes. You got voice actors being terminated and hired. You got contracts being severed. You have presidents stepping down and heads of animation stepping down. And now, potentially, ex-head of animation Grey Haddock being terminated from Rooster Teeth. Although that's not confirmed just yet. But there are a number of reasons why. There's a big indication that he actually has been terminated. But I'm not saying he has. Let me just show you what we do know at the moment. And uh, that's what we'll be talking about in this video. It's going to be a good one. I'll see you in just a moment. Now, we can't have a Grey Haddock related video without talking about his baby, Genlock, which was uh, finally released this year, 2019. Had its uh, first episode in January, if I recall, 2019. And uh, this was a very big production that was hyped up a lot. And if it went well, I just can't imagine why Grey's getting terminated. Hypothetically, if Genlock went really well, he must be getting terminated for something else. But again, I'm not saying he's terminated yet. This is just speculation. And again, if indeed he does end up uh, being publicly announced as terminated from Rooster Teeth. At that point, you know, just know this video is being made before that happens. So when you're watching this, who knows, maybe Gray actually will be terminated from RT and they'll have a public statement on it. Right now, it's not the case. This is just speculation. Anyways, Genlock comes out this year. It's supposed to be a massive success for Rooster Teeth, a groundbreaking new type of uh, animation, a new type of show. Again, if it went well, why is he getting terminated? It would have to be a termination for different reasons. But what? Could it be the crunch time being forced on the animators, even if they sign the contract? Maybe they're being taken advantage of. That's debatable. Or is it something else? Was Genlock a massive failure? Let's speculate. Let's get some backstory on Genlock first, for those of you that don't know. Taken from Wikipedia, Genlock is an animated web series created by Grey Haddock and produced by Rooster Teeth. It is set in a dystopian future Earth where an international coalition known as the Polity fights a hostile autocratic invading force known as the Union. The show follows the Genlock program and its members, who participate in the development and testing of an experimental technology, which allows for individuals with unique mental makeups to have their minds uploaded to giant suits of mecha armor. Basically, think uh, Source Code with Jake Gyllenhaal, except instead of uh, a train, it's a, it's a mech. Now, development. Here's the really interesting stuff. Concept for Genlock originated in 2017 as a cautionary tale about cultural warfare. Oh, so it, from the get-go, it was supposed to be a political thing? Oh, okay, got it. It was announced with a brief teaser, RTX Austin 2018. We're going to skip to the next paragraph here. Grey had excited several anime titles as inspirations, including Ghost in the Shell, Gundam, Aldnoa Zero, Kizneighbor, which is actually one that I do want to watch. I'll at least give uh, Grey props for watching that. I've heard good things about that. I uh, haven't seen it myself. In the writing of Jen Orobuki, in May 2018, it was announced that Michael B. Jordan would voice lead character Julian Chase. That was a controversial decision more so recently when you hear about the lack of uh, uh, compensation for these crunch time workers again it's debatable due to the contracts that were signed and we don't know the contracts at least i don't have that information certainly some people do i don't most of us don't so we're not going to talk about that uh moving on though also has dakota fanning david tenement and apparently uh genlock is the rooster teeth animations first series that allowed members that are part of sag and aftra which are unions for actors more or less like uh, those people to work on the show so it's just I can't imagine how much it would cost to hire to go to Fanning and Michael B. Jordan to voice act. I mean, really? Is that where you want to put the budget? I guess so. Jordan's production company, Outlier Society Productions, co-producers the show. Co-produces the show. In July 2018, Austin-based writer Evan Narcy joined the writing staff. Uh, for the first four months, the team animated the show without the voices recorded. Having performed every voice for the first few episodes himself, hoping the direction would match later. And Genlock premiered January 26, 2019 on Rooster Teeth's first platform. Only about four, five months ago. And uh, here we are now. What the heck happened, Gray? I don't know. So why even think that Gray is no longer with Rooster Teeth? Well, he was the head of animation and allegedly he was forced to resign. We'll go over that post in a moment. But here's his Twitter bio. It says writer, director, scoundrel. Doesn't even mention working for Rooster Teeth. And if I recall, but I'm not gonna say this is a fact because I don't remember for sure. I, I'm pretty sure he had head of animation for Rooster Teeth there. And I recall, I think, but my, memory's phase, uh, my, my, my memory is fuzzy and hazy, so I'm not going to say this is a fact. But I think I remember, even after he was uh, allegedly forced to step down as head of animation, he still had head of, head of animation in his bio. At some point, he may have changed that to whatever position he now was in with Rooster Teeth. But the fact is, there's no longer any Rooster Teeth position in his Twitter bio. 
quite odd, quite odd indeed, isn't it? Uh, it also doesn't help that the dude blocked me. Uh, that makes me instantly suspicious. Like, what are, what are you trying to hide? I've been covering the Rooster Teeth news quite a lot in 2019, and some of those view, uh, some of those videos are getting pretty good views. And I feel like some of RT is aware of my content because some of them have been blocking me. And hey, RT, if you're watching this and you haven't blocked me, that's great. I got a lot of respect for that <laughs> because it's a it's a rare thing these days. Honestly, I just want to see the company go back to being the way it used to be awesome and you know down to earth and for the fans i know it's difficult for you guys being in a corporate position now but hopefully there's at least a middle ground you can find and you know if gray indeed did do some bad things at the company and you guys are terminating him well cheers to moving forward in a more positive light i guess but i don't know the circumstances behind gray's uh termination if he's terminated uh i can comment on genlock though and the people i've talked to about that a lot of people seem to not really like Genlock that I've spoken to. Uh, there's actually a meme that says Genlock more like generic, <laughs> and it's a pretty well-received meme. Now, don't get me wrong. There are people that like the show, and that's totally fine. But I don't think it was as well-received as uh, RT or Gray would have liked. But I don't know why Gray might be terminated if he is, and let's move on, I guess, to the next point. Actually, one more thing for any RT employees that might be watching this. Some advice for you guys. You want to you wanna do a show that's going to be very most likely to succeed assuming you, you you do it right right forget genlock make the team stark spinoff for ruby make the spinoff i know you guys are thinking about it there's no way there's no way you guys are not already thinking about a stark spinoff at some point you got to do it it's it, everyone wants it, it it's it, it's got to be the demand for a team stark spinoff for ruby is through the roof i think you guys know that already but if you don't in my opinion, it would do very well, in my opinion, and many of the people I've talked to. And hey, I can even give you another advice for a Ruby spinoff as well. And this is one that I made as an April Fool's joke. And guess what? Even though it was a joke, so many people love this idea. So Rooster Teeth, I'm giving you free ideas here for content. And again, it's Ruby related. And I understand you want people to stay on the site as first members and, you know, not only be there for Ruby and to kind of enjoy the other stuff you, you, you make. And that makes sense. You're running a business. You don't want to be pigeonholed in one show. It makes sense. I'm gonna leave that part to you guys though. In terms of Ruby, I can comment on that. I like Ruby. I've been following it for years and years and years extensively. Neo spinoff, guys. You gotta do it. At least like a two to four episode thing. Like it doesn't have to be a big thing, but a little Neo spinoff where we see like a prologue of her character, her story and that stuff. Guys, I know what I'm talking about here. At least in my opinion, best girl needs a spinoff. And in my April Fool's video, I literally laid out an entire plot and characters to use and to make it all fit together. Now, of course, you don't need to use my ideas. That that might be a bit silly. And I don't know anything about writing. I mean, hopefully you guys can do a better job than what I came up with. But hey, if you want to watch the video, if you haven't, it's out there. Type in here, oh, hey, April Fool's Neo spinoff or something like that. You'll see it. But uh, yeah, I, I think that'd be be cool. And I hope you guys do that down the road. Neo Stark spinoffs. It's uh probably going to be a good thing in my opinion for the sake of completionism let's take a look at that previous post uh from only three weeks ago response to the recent reddit thread about rooster teeth animation uh, it says we have seen the recent messages about rooster teeth's animation studio related to crunch and want everyone to know that we take these concerns seriously we acknowledge that we could have better managed our animation pipeline and we apologize to all who have been affected over the last several months we have conducted a review and have taken several steps to improve communication and workflow to ensure that we have a studio where people are happy to come to work every day we are announcing today new measures on the road to improvement Effective today, we are moving forward with a previously planned change in our producing and creative structure. Previously planned, all right. Gray G. Haddock is stepping down as head of studio for animation to dedicate himself to a strictly creative role. We're going to stop there for one second and take a look at the post from Ezra Cooperstein right here. This was the post that Ezra made when he was stepping down as president of Rooster Teeth. Now, there's something very different here. This letter was written by Ezra. This post was written by Ezra about himself stepping down. This post about Gray wasn't written by Gray. Someone else is writing about Gray. Now, I don't know if that means anything, but it very well may. I don't know what, but that's a bit strange, isn't it? With Gray's help, we have been in the process of hiring a new production head of the department who will be responsible for the overall producer hierarchy and staff management. We want to thank Gray for his hard work and dedication to growing the animation studio over these years and are excited to continue working with him in this new capacity. We'll see if that aged well. Like I said, 
I still don't know for sure. I don't know factually if Gray's been terminated from Rooster Teeth, but I'm speculating that he may be. We'll see if that age as well. Further, we are consulting with experienced leaders in the animation industry on our workflow, pipeline production structure, and other areas to enhance the workplace experience for our staff. Margaret M. Dean, the head of Alation Animation Studios and president of Women in Animation, will consult with us and aid the search for a new studio lead. We will always continue to work on improvements to our workplace, and we appreciate everyone's support and feedback on this ongoing mission. So again, in closing, if Gray is actually terminated from Rooster Teeth, what do you think caused that? Was it a massive failure from the end of Genlock? Was it the crunch time allegations and Gray being the head of animation at the time? Could it be a another factor that we don't really know about? Maybe all of the above. Let me know your thoughts on that and let me show you one more thing here really quick. Just a list of the main characters from Genlock and you might be able to get an estimate over the cost of production for this program. You got Michael B. Jordan, Dakota Fanning, which we already talked about, Maisie Williams, Koichi Yamadura, Go, uh, G. Farashani, Asia Kate Dillon, David Tenement, Monica Riel, Blaine Gibson, Gray Haddock, Miles Luna, and Chad James. Now, of course, the cost of production for something like Genlock is going to include a lot more than just the voice acting. You have the animation, you have the overhead, literally, the light, electricity, air conditioning that's going to be used in the studio while these people are working on this stuff. Works of art like concept art, insurance costs, maybe some other fees that have to go out, etc, etc. But the point is, it's interesting that these allegations of crunch time come out while you have some very well-known names on the voice acting roster for the characters. All stuff to take a look into if you're so inclined, and I'll leave you at that. For the video I made yesterday about the ex-pop idol so when the Tokyo government, Metropolitan government, have some shout outs for the wonderful people who helped promote that video by posting it on Twitter. Thank you guys for that. And if it was posted elsewhere, I appreciate that as well. My system only tells me when it's posted on Twitter though. So shouts out to Mr. Anime343, Anime Tony, Random Fandom, US Super Saiyan Thai, hashtag I stand with Vic, and Paragon Langston of Amped Guard. Thank you all for your support with that video. I hope you also enjoyed this one. And if you'd be inclined to join the Discord, open to the public now with over 3,000. 600 members. I'd love to see you there. And if you'd like to do a bit extra to support this channel, the content we're creating here, consider becoming a sponsor over on Patreon. Link in the description. And I will see you next time. Wrecked in a